Hello and welcome to a super duper duper special version of Ask Dogfish because this month the asks are coming from my homeboys and homegirls. This is the co-worker edition of Ask Dogfish. Let's do this. So this question comes in from my pal Ryan in marketing who says, my sneaker game is on point and he wants to know how many kicks I have in my closet. First of all, props back to you and your mad style, my friend. Um, and yes, I am kind of the Imelda Marcos of my neighborhood in Lewis. I think I do have more sneakers than my wife Mariah has shoes. That's probably a good indication. I'd say the space is about this high and that wide, and it's about shin high with sneakers. So there's gotta be a good three dozen pairs of sneakers in my house. This question comes in from James Montero, who oversees our distillery business. And uh, the question is, what is my personal go-to holiday cocktail? It's also my go-to summer cocktail. It is my go-to cocktail. It was a version of the beloved cocktail of Ernest Hemingway, whether he was on his boat, the Pilar, off of Cuba, hunting big sport fish, or in Africa, hunting other things, or Paris hunting new wives, uh, and it is a compelling gin, uh, gin and tonic using fever trees, tonic, taking a whole lime, slicing it into fourths and squeezing two fourths, otherwise known as a half, into that with a few drops of orange bitters. I double dog dare you to try it at home. It'll make your relatives way more tolerable around the dinner table this holiday season. So this question actually comes in from Big Mama, one of my favorite co-workers who probably right now is up at, whoa, Big Mama's actually right here, give me a hug. Oh, we're gonna do this one live. So uh, what, the, what is the question, so Big Mama? my question for you, Sam, is mm -hmm. totally non-beer related. Mm -hmm. What's next on your bucket list? Next on my bucket list is I wanna go to the place where Hemingway was on the Pilar, sport fishing, and dance my face off it's Cuba. I loved Cuba in the good, felt, good, what was it? No, Godfather movie. So good. And again, Hemingway hung out there. Oh, and I'm going to get to go there next week with my wife. <gasps> Oh and, my God, and I'm so gonna dance with her. I'm gonna dance and listen to awesome oh, Cuban music. Awesome. Will you will you dance now with me to hypothetical oh, Cuban music? Yes. <laughs> this is nice. Oh yes. <laughs> this oh, is really even, nice. Oh yeah. <laughs> Next question comes in from my pal Desiree, who oversees our merchandise world. If you love the dogfish head wearables, thanks to Desiree and her team, they do an awesome job with that. And her question is, what? is the most important sort of overarching principle for me at Dogfish Head. And I'm gonna go with a tie. Uh, if you come visit our facilities and do tours, whether it's our inn or our breweries or our pub, you'll often see writ large on a wall this Emerson quote that really is sort of the, the founding document that I started the Dogfish Head um, business plan with. And at the center of that quote is this concept of an exploration of goodness. And that is truly what we are on at Dogfish Head. We don't bow down in the uh, status quo and we march to our own drum and when we do it well uh, it is an impressive loud drum and my other fave is at kind of the centerpiece of our rules of thumb which is dogfish head sort of official but very casual um, uh, sort of guiding principles. And the one that resonates the most with me is together we are heavy. Uh, Mariah and I, as the owners of Dogfish Head, have never referred to anyone that works here as our employee. It skeeves me out to think uh, that I would ever uh, believe anyone works for me. We all work together and we all work for Dogfish, but really when we work well together, then Dogfish Head's working uh, for us. Uh, and that is the spirit of Together We Are Heavy. So we got a bonus question, because this one isn't from a coworker, but he's kind of like an extended family coworker, because Adam Askew uh, is one of our most uh, evangelical social media homies. And the question is, when is Liqueur de Malt coming back? Uh, so those of you that aren't bi the way I am, bilingual with the French, probably should know that Liqueur de Malt is French for malt liquor. That's a fancy way of saying malt liquor. And many, many years ago, I had the idea of, let's take this much maligned American beer style, let's put an off-centered twist on it and take it askew, if you will, 
um, by adding really nice gourmet red, blue, and white American uh, corns, but otherwise being very traditional in the malt liquor awesomeness that it is. So yes, liqueur de malt is something that we loved. We hand bottled it in 40 ounces. We stamped our logo on the brown paper bags that went over 40 ounces. Challenge accepted, Adam. We are gonna do a new version of liqueur de malt. It might be small batch, in that you have to come here to get it, but you have my word, and probably my coworkers, some of them are gonna be uh, surprised and, and disappointed to hear that we are gonna have to hand bottle or do something to package some liqueur de malt, but I know more of us are gonna be excited, so thank you for the challenge. Right, liqueur de malt, I guess it's coming back. And that is our very special holiday co-worker edition of Ask Dogfish. Happy holiday to you and your families, and thank you to my extended family for asking these awesome questions. Cheers. Mm -hmm.